Welcome to Truth and Company Boxing Podcast for another segment of 20 Random Questions. I'm John the Truth Theoria, and today's guest is former world champion, the White Buffalo Francis Botha, all the way from South Africa. How you doing, Francis? Great, great stuff. Thank you for having me, guys. I appreciate it. So how is it in South Africa right now? Oh, it's beautiful. It's a place to be, but everybody wants to be here, boo. <laughs> but nobody can afford to go there. I know, yeah, money is tight, though. <laughs> so listen, what have you been doing since uh, you retired? I, I've seen you on social media. You run a gym? You own a gym? Yeah, White Buffalo Boxing and Fitness. Uh, you know, it's uh, we in Schlanga, Durban KZN. And, uh, yeah, I think we're getting a lot of traction. Uh, everybody should uh, come here because this is a place to be, to get to into boxing. So now are you just doing amateur fighters? You're doing fitness? Do you got any pro fighters? No, we get amateurs and pros. Everybody's coming, you know. So, uh, yeah, we're busy uh, putting up a good stable here. <laughs> so we might see you back on TV someday as a trainer in the corner, possibly? Yeah, well, you never know. The buffalo, the buffalo is still roaming everywhere. So uh, some exciting news will, will soon break the break the break the uh, into the world. So yeah, everybody will uh, get excited. Okay. Speaking of that, now a lot of boxers been coming back out of retirement and doing these exhibitions, like Shannon Briggs right now. I know you saw his interview. Um, Rampage Jackson is going to fight him. I know Ikabuchi, Ike Ikabuchi's training right now. He's trying to do a comeback. Tyson's done him. Roy Jones is doing him. Are we ever going to see you come back and do an exhibition fight? Not an exhibition, but, uh, you know, the talks are right now for a real fight. Really? So, uh, yeah, we're actually, we're actually uh, putting together, uh, you know, George Foreman was the oldest heavyweight champion in history. So uh, I'm I'm about to announce soon that uh, I'll be who I'll be fighting because I'm fighting to become the oldest oldest heavyweight champion in history. So you're actually you, so you've been training everything. That it, there's talks in the making for you to possibly get a world title shot and become the oldest heavyweight champion of the world. Uh, that's correct. Yes. <clears throat> Nice. Good to hear. Good to hear. Yeah, the White Buffalo Boxing and Fitness has been keeping me busy. So, you know, the Buffalo uh, only have to go to team camp uh, probably three months. I'll be good. Okay. All right. So you ready for these random 20 questions? You got it. <laughs> okay. Question one. Just so the fans know a little bit more about your background, tell me about your background and your upbringing in South Africa. Not the boxing part, just kind of the living part and growing up, you know, with siblings or parents and about mm. South Africa a little bit. Oh, lovely. Yeah, we had, <clears throat> I grew up in a small town called Whitbank. It's a coal mining town. <clears throat> and basically, uh, you know, you get all the sports indoors in schools, you know, like cricket, rugby and all that. And then my dad, my dad wanted us to do something outdoors as well. And, uh, you know, I chose boxing and I never looked back afterwards. Okay. But no, I mean, do, do you have, do you have siblings? Yes, I had, I, I, my brother passed. I got a brother, an older brother, he passed. Uh, and then I got one sister. Okay. All right. Question two. So that comes to the boxing. How did you get involved in the sport of boxing? I was a boy six years old, and that's when my dad uh, took me to a boxing gym. And uh, after I won my first trophy as an amateur, I never looked back. Never looked back. I enjoyed that feeling. So I went. I went on and I won twenty-eight amateur titles, as I can recall, and I won my uh, country scholars twice. But those years uh, there was apartheid in South Africa, so we couldn't go to the Olympics. So uh, I, I won the gold medal in the all Africa games. Okay. And, and then, then obviously. Then, yeah. And then I, then I, when I became a fireman and, uh, you know, I was a fireman for four years, but 
before that I, I I was a little bit naughty and we jumped the wall to, to get some peaches or something and I fell into a hole and I cut my whole arm. You know, I cut, if you can look here, you'll see the cut. And uh, yeah, I cut my whole arm and the doctors told me, listen, boxing is over, forget about boxing, you'll never fight again. So I, I had no feeling in my right arm and uh, I couldn't straighten my right arm. And uh, you know what I said, listen, only God decides for me. And I went on and I went on and I won my won my last amateur title that I wanted, and then I became a fireman. And, and, and it was, and, uh, yeah, and, and it was in the in when I was in the fire department. Uh, it was an exciting, it was an exciting job, a great job, you know, uh, you know, the fires, the saving lives. A lot of people think fire firefighters are only doing fires. Now we do a lot of car accidents, you know, we a lot, a lot, we do everything. So, so it was very when uh, an, an African promoter came to me and asked me, he said, "Listen, do you wanna do you wanna fight?" And I said, "Listen, I'm not the same fighter I used to be as an amateur." But he gave me a car, he gave me a good salary, and I said, "Let me do it." And yeah, most of my fights was international. Yeah, but you fought like all the big household names too. Yes, I did. <laughs> I think my first loss, my first loss came against uh, Michael Moore. I was uh, 36 and I was a heavyweight. And uh, I fought Michael Moore. And I, I'm telling you, that fight day, I think the second run, I was dead, dead tired. I could, I, my, my, I was just gone. I think my, my training was just, I overtrained. I mean, I did so, so well in training camp. I mean, uh, I did. Couple of couple of ten rounders even before a fight, but I went, I went, I think I went over my peak. And uh, Michael Moore, I think the second round I was dead, and I mean I still went ten rounds. How I did it, I never know. But he wanted to quit. Yeah, I mean it's actually a fight where he wanted to quit. I think I broke his jaw in the second round, and uh, his trainer Teddy Atlas talked him into going on. He said, "Do you want to tell everybody you lost to that guy?" And he kept on. Getting more back into a fight. That was my first last one. So now some people might not know, but after uh, I think it was after your boxing career, you've actually done some kickboxing for a while, and you actually did one MMA fight, right? Yeah, the, yes, I did. You know, I came to Japan. As I came to Japan, all the kickboxers were sitting on the podium, and I said, "I'm going to kick all your asses up here," you know. And uh, I'm telling you, after I felt those kicks, and I, you know, it's brutal. So it, it, it taught me one thing. It taught me never talk about anybody's profession until you walk those shoes. But, uh, but I did pretty well. You know, I beat the number two. I beat the three-time world champion. I beat the number two. But then again, I lost to uh, some guys that, you know, I shouldn't have probably lost. But okay. it was an exciting, exciting game. So before we move on, I just gotta ask this. Now, when you fought Mike Tyson, do you did he really try to break your arm in that fight, you think? Yeah. Yeah, no, definitely. I mean you could see how the force that he used. And uh, you know, in reality, that fight should have been done there if I just grabbed my arm, but I didn't want to win like that. I know I could beat him. Uh I mean, every round, I mean, I was leading the fight. I think scorecard was 5-0, or something. I can't remember exactly. But, yeah, I, was, I couldn't lose. But he's got the power. I mean, the punches that he missed, you can hear the wind go past the punch. You know, you hear the wind going past you, past your face. So it's, every, every punch, he want to knock you out. <laughs> okay. Question uh, three. Did you have any hobbies outside the sport of boxing? Yes, I, I love fishing. Uh, not so much hunting, although I'm a buffalo, you know. <laughs> but uh, yeah, fishing, I love fishing. Uh oh. You still got me. Yeah, we just dropped off for a second. I kind of anticipated yeah. that. Go ahead. Yeah, so fishing, uh, I love fishing. I love the outdoors. Uh, yeah, it's beautiful. Golf, I love golf. I play golf. I was actually too handicapped in California. 
when I when I when I when I stayed in California, okay. Newport Beach. All right, Newport Beach. I, uh, yeah. Okay. Go ahead. No, no. Finish. Yeah, like I was, I was there. I was a member of the Newport Beach uh, Country Club in California. So played a lot of golf. Actually, went down to two handicap. But yeah, that was uh, so. Golf, golf is also a, a good outdoor sport. Okay. Question uh, four: Did you have any boxing superstitions when you fought? No, no, not at all. No, no, no. Okay. Question five: Who's the one fighter that you never got to fight? George Foreman. Uh, George Foreman and me was made, and I was still a cruiserweight at that time. And uh, I agreed. I think they offered me back then. They offered me five hundred thousand dollars. I yeah. And then I still I still accepted that. And then they brought another fight in, also from South Africa, Pia Kutsu. And uh, they brought my purse down to three fifty. I still I remember. I still said yes. I went down again, and I said no. And Pia Kutsu ended up fighting George Foreman. Okay. All right, question six. What's something that your boxing fans don't know about you? <laughs> hey, probably, uh, uh, I don't know. I'm, uh, I can't actually tell because then they're going to know. <laughs> well, I mean, just tell me something small that's not that important that boxing fans probably wouldn't know. Again, I'm very romantic. Okay. I love my I love my wife. You know, I love my wife. She's my queen, and uh, yeah, I I treat her whenever I can. I'm a good family man. I love my family. Okay. I'm getting comments on the side of my screen. People saying that they want you and Ikabuchi to fight. That'll be a good fight. It'll be a good fight. That they were talks. They were talks uh, way back with me and I uh, I fighting. But yeah. I, I, you know, it's a, it's a demand. If people really want it, yeah, you can do it. Okay. All right, question seven. Uh, what's the craziest or the funniest story that ever happened between you and a boxing fan? Gee. Hey, there's a lot of stuff, eh? Yeah. I can't, I, there's so many things, I, I mean, so many things that happen, I mean, uh, you know, I can't really think uh, about something crazy that happened, but yeah, I, I was walking, I was walking down the, through the MGM Grand, and my security was around me, and the next moment I just felt somebody hit me in my ribs, <clears throat> and as, I, as I'm looking at the guy, the guy's standing in front of me, and he's like, I said, yeah, man, what are you doing? And, and I'm looking for my security. My security is not there. And I had good security. And the next moment, the guy punched at me. And I just got one punch. And the guy fell. The people screaming at him. And I just kept walking. Because it was in, in the MGM, one of Tyson, I think Tyson Bruno. So this guy just walked up out of nowhere and hit you. And you hit him back and just dropped him? Yeah, I dropped him. And I just kept walking. Kept walking. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now you mentioned fishing, so my question eight actually was, do you fish and hunt? I fish a lot, you know, I, 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 and my, my granddad actually had a big wild game farm uh, in South Africa, yeah? and but I only went and I only shot one one uh, uh, gazelle, you know, like during when I'm, 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 I'm growing up. I'm not a big fan of hunting and killing, but uh, fishing, yes, I love it. Okay. All right, question nine. What's the most dangerous thing you've ever done? I think boxing. <laughs> <laughs> I suppose, because you've been in the ring with some pretty bad guys. No, no, no. I, I, uh, I think uh, a fireman, my being, being a fireman, when I was a fireman, you know, uh, back then, I mean, when you go into a, a building and it's just burning, and you know, like back then, the big when they the bomb they put a bomb into one of our buildings here, and 
remember going into the building. So, I mean, uh, I think that is probably the firefighting was actually gave me a great, great experience. It was uh, something that I will never forget. And I always treasure it because, you know, even if you save someone's life, uh, it's, it's such a rewarding experience, you know. And I think that was, uh, that was something. And I think, yeah, you know, look at the United States, the firemen, they are big heroes. You know, it's like, it, it, I think it's a great job. Okay. Question 10, what's something that you're very passionate about besides boxing? Uh, basically, you know, just the, the kids on the streets, the school kids, getting them involved in, in what we do, what we, what we do and what we love. That's something that I'm passionate about and I want to get more of the kids, you know. Uh, that's why I'm visiting the schools, I'm visiting the colleges, I'm, I'm doing talks about what what you gotta do outdoors? What what we did as as kids outdoors? You have you have to have a sport outdoors, and you know it, it keeps you out of mischief, keeps you out of trouble. So uh, having that sport in the afternoons, uh, that's what you gotta do. And I think uh, that's a, that's what I'm passionate about is giving the kids something to 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 look forward to, not just you know being on the street. What are you doing during the rest of the day in, at at home? Rather come and do something that's going to better you. All right, question 11. If you could be any animal for one day, what animal would it be? Only one. But only one. There's only one that I can be. And that, but I'm, I am that. You know, and I think the, the Native Americans soon will see the white buffalo again. There's only one white buffalo. <laughs> okay. All right, question 12. Now, Anybody that has looked at your resume knows that you fought a lot of punchers in your time and, and you made it through with a lot. And you, I mean, you gave it back just as good as you took it. But question 12, who is the hardest puncher you've ever faced in the ring in a fight or sparring? Mm. I'm going to tell you something, but uh, everybody thinks Tyson, 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 you know? Uh, actually, my hardest fight was even, uh, it was one of my amateur fights. It was a fight here in, basically in South Africa. But uh, if it comes to my my opponents that I fought, I think, you know what, let me tell you, Lennox Lewis, uh, he, he is very hard. I mean, I, I could feel the power in his punches. Uh, although, you know, I never performed the way I wanted to perform with him because he caught me with a left upper gun, hit me out of a ring with a right, and I took too long to come back and I, they stopped the fight. So it was a very bad fight for me, but I could feel the power in, in, in Lennox's punches. And of course, you know, don't take away Mike Tyson. I mean, the punches that he missed, every punch he want to knock you out, you can hear the wind going past. So every punch he froze to take you out of it. So between uh, Lennox and Mike, yes, definitely. Those were the guys that, that I could feel the power. Okay. Question 13. Who was your favorite opponent that you fought? You know, I um, I, I, I liked it when uh, we did the Call of a Wild. I don't know if you can remember that fight. It was the White Buffalo against the Black Rhino. Oh yes, Clifford at the end. Yes, yes, yes. That was a uh, it was a fight that I enjoyed. The Black Rhino against the White Buffalo, just because of uh, the names. Okay. All right. Question fifteen uh, or question fourteen? Can you tell me an interesting story out of your boxing career? Any story? Sure. Ah. Uh, I mean, as an amateur, I can tell you, as an amateur, we, uh, we, you know, boxing in South Africa, amateur boxing was very big. So, I mean, we had so many championships that we had to go for. That's why I had over 200 amateur fights. So we'll get into a car or me, a mini bus and we'll, we'll take the road and we'll go to different provinces, you know, fight. Sometimes you'll fight like three fights, four fights in a day. And then the next day you'll fight again four fights. And then you go to the final. So you know that's that's good experiences. That's why that's why it's good for any kid to 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 become involved in an outdoor sport. Okay. 
All right, question 15. If you could meet any infamous person from history, who would you want to meet? Hey, there's only one from history. There's only one. Jesus Christ. Yeah, but he's not really infamous, though. Ah, okay, now we we'll know. Uh, might be some of the past leaders, you know, some of the past leaders of, uh, you know, uh, a lot of people say they would like to meet Gandhi, you know. I would probably want to meet some of the past leaders, see why and what, you know, Nelson Mandela. Uh, I would love, I mean, you know what, when, when I fought uh, for the world title in Germany, actually uh, Nelson Mandela gave me a, a great, uh, great message and a great letter. And uh, you know, to, we're wishing me all the best for my world title fight. Wow, that's so yes, interesting. I, yes, yes. All right, question sixteen: Did you suffer any injuries due to the sport of boxing? Mm. No, not really bad. Not, not into boxing. No, not in boxing. It was all outside of boxing. So yeah, boxing is pretty safe, but you cannot <laughs> play it. <laughs> okay. All right. Question seventeen. Or uh, yeah, question seventeen. What's your favorite sports team? Do you have a favorite sports team? Well, in the in the USA, I like the Dallas Cowboys. Oh, so you're a football fan? I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then, of course, in South Africa, I gotta go with the Springboks. You know, in rugby. So yeah. Okay. I got to I got to I got that's basically my my guys I follow. Okay. All right, question 18. What's your favorite food snack? Are are your favorite snack food? Mm. Yeah. Actually, the buffalo eat everything. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah, I like I I love my protein, you know, so um, my son, who is uh, also one of our coaches in in, in uh, White Buffalo Boxing and Fitness, you know, he's preparing all my meals and my uh, shakes and everything. So he prepares most of my food. The boy is here, actually. I'll, I'll, I'll show you to him. Hey, how are you guys? How are you doing? All right, all right. So, so basically what, what he eats, I would say his favorite yeah. snack would probably have to be... Uh, you like your bolt on, eh? Yeah, yeah. jerky. South African style jerky. Okay. So it's South African style jerky. It's a good source of protein. Any kind of protein, basically. That's what I snack on. I mean, shakes. and then my son, my, my son makes all my shakes for me, you know, protein powders and stuff. Like but he, he makes it quite, quite good because he puts like uh, blueberries in, he puts some fruits in and some snacks and muesli and everything. So it's a great, it's a great snack. Okay. All right. Question 19. If you wrote a book on your life in boxing, what would the title be? The White Buffalo. <laughs> okay. I kind of figured that, but I didn't know if you were going to get, I didn't know if you were going to say something else, but no, that's a good title. So. But let me let me tell you about that the book and the movie everything was in the making i mean you know what i i i had a deal with momentum pictures in california in hollywood where uh, uh some guy is gonna play me they're gonna tell the story back into time uh, and stuff like that but yeah then then my old phone crashed my last contact but i never know what happened there but according to that that was that was in the making so there was supposed to be a book and a movie then Yes, I did all the interviews. I did interviews. They came here to, here to my house, and you know, we did interviews, everything. Yeah. Wow, that would have been an interesting movie. Yeah. All right. Question twenty: If you died tomorrow, what would you want your fans, your friends, and your family to say about you? There goes a good man. Okay. <laughs> pretty, no, no, yeah, keeping you know, it pretty simple. Yeah, we go. Oh, very nice, a good man. I don't know how we're gonna say it, but yeah, or well, he was a good man. All right. Well, listen. I appreciate you taking time to come on and do the random twenty questions. I hope you had fun with them. 
Um, if you'd like to promote the gym or anything else or make any more announcements or just say something to the fans that, you know, followed you for your whole career, go ahead. Yeah, lovely, man. You know, uh, follow White Buffalo Boxing and Fitness. I mean, it's very simple. It's www.whitebuffalo.co.za. And that's our website. And you can get all the contact details there and come to where it's the place to be the best. White Buffalo Boxing and Fitness. Woo! You want to say anything to the fans? Thank you for all your support. The White Buffalo is not done yet. News will break break the wire as soon as it'll hot up the wire. Look at that. It's coming. Whew. All right, hold on. And the truth has spoken. <laughs>